Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial I want to talk to you about chiral carbons on allocyclic ring structures. More and more in the A-level examinations we've started to notice that exam boards are giving you quite large organic structures and asking you to determine the number of chiral carbons or chiral centers distributed across the structure. And very often, these large structures contain allocyclic rings. And you can have a chiral carbon on an allocyclic ring. You just need to meet a certain set of criteria. And you also need to be careful because lots of them are presented in skeletal formula. So let's take a look at what you need. So I'm using this example here with a CH3 group at the top and a CCL bond right at the bottom across from it. And we're going to study to see first off if this particular allocyclic structure contains a chiral carbon. If we study the top carbon on this particular allocyclic structure and draw on that CH bond just there, we could be led to believe that this top carbon actually is a chiral carbon one which is bonded to four different atoms or groups because we've got the hydrogen as one group up here the ch3 is another and then the two directions around the ring here which could potentially classify as two separate groups however unfortunately they don't and the reason for that is because the ring structure from that point is symmetrical and so going around this side is exactly the same as going around this side and so we don't classify those two directions as two different groups. I would need to consider a structural isomer of this particular allocyclic structure to find a version which has a chiral center. That can be quite easily achieved though if I pinch off this CCL bond just here and move it to the side, then actually now what I've done is if I go from this carbon at the top like before and go down this way and down this way, I encounter two completely different sets of bonding because this CCL group is now causing for my ring structure to be unsymmetrical. And so now I can label this carbon at the top as being chiral. So that's an example of a chiral center. Furthermore, if I was to now actually look at this carbon atom down here with the CCL on it, I've got a group here second, a third if I go around this way because it's unsymmetrical, and that way I also appear to have a chiral center, a chiral carbon if you will, in that position on the allocyclic structure as well. So you can have chiral carbons on allocyclic rings, you just need to make sure that your ring is not symmetrical going around either direction from the carbon atom you're considering is chiral or not. Hopefully that gives you a bit more confidence in tackling these questions in examinations. If you did find this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. Until next time, happy revising.